finally impress Lamelo, who said the other day he's really not that into basketball. I know he did. Look at him. Oh, I'm part of this moment. That's I'm adorable. Gonna, this is a poster moment, but he says, "Hey, I was in the poster, but I didn't get posterized." So he's happy about that. <laughs> At this point in time, that young fellow has seen it all. Mm. Well, yeah, that was like, so the other day said I didn't grow up as into basketball like that. And Robert and I were both like, but you grew you up stop, with stop, the. Yeah. Yeah, Welcome stop. to the jump. <laughs> I'm Rachel Nichols alongside NBA champ Richard Jefferson. Four NBA finals for this man. I'd like to pub that a little more. You, whatever you need. Mm -hmm. I'm here for it. Especially but when you're sitting next to this I, seven I time ring over there, Robert. To, Ori. I, we, we shared a moment, though. We shared NBA finals together. We, yeah, I share a lot of finals. They, they, never, went, they never went the way that I wanted to. But yes, we did. Uh, yes, especially we did. not the one with us, because you uh, kind of like. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> and there we go. You're going to share a discussion on Lonzo Ball, gentlemen, in Thanks. just a few minutes, because coming up, the Call Clippers are reportedly it. interested yeah. in trading for Lonzo. Do Richard and Robert like this idea, given that the Clips haven't won consecutive games in a month? Hmm. Stick around to find out. First, though, we are thrilled to debut a new segment here on The Junk Call. Can I have a word? Let's start out in D.C., where the 13th place Wizards out east beat the Jazz, who own the best record in the league, of course. Bradley Beal scored 43 points. Russell Westbrook had 35, 15 rebounds, 13 assists. Jeez. After the game, Rudy Gobert challenged his teammates to fight back on the narrative about his team. Take a listen. Uh, I think we have to understand that we haven't accomplished you know, uh, we've been to the second round a few times, but, uh, uh, you know, we, 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 we get upset when people kind of laugh, laugh at us on TV and disrespect us and, and, you know, at least disrespect out there, but, but we, it's on us to have respect for ourselves. All right. So Richard, can I have a word for Rudy Gobert's post game comments? No, I put it right here, right here. Correct. Uh, he is a hundred percent correct. One, he needs to challenge his teammates as a defensive, you know, player of the year, as that guy multiple times. He is a person that needs to challenge his team defensively. The next part about it that I, I really agree with him is like they haven't accomplished anything. And so if you want that respect, it's a day in, it's a day out, and then it's a postseason. But the postseason starts now for them. Yeah. Yeah, right, 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 Robert. I'm going to ask you to reveal yours in a second. But do you feel? Do you agree on on his point? I, I totally agree with you, and it's kind of kind of connects into what I want to say for my word. All right, we're gonna we're gonna get you on screen here. <laughs> All right. So there you go. What so is your word? My word is inconvenience. Oh, oh. all and right. What I mean by that, if you want to be a champion, you can't have these little inconvenient losses because you have to prepare yourself for the finals. You have to do these things. I say the finals for the playoffs. Yeah. You, if you want to get to the finals, you can't have inconvenient, inconvenient losses because you need the best record in the NBA because you're one of the best teams that play at home. We know from years past, your fans are some of the best. So we know they're letting fans back into the stadiums, yeah. maybe, mm -hmm. but we already seen them at your stadium. So you need this. <laughs> you need this very much. Did you, did you write that? I don't have very good penmanship, so yeah, and I couldn't spell that. So <laughs> for them. I want to shout out actually who wrote these. These entire boards were designed by our friend Katie Bomber. She did an amazing job. Yeah, you will see throughout job. this segment. Exactly. I like it. I did we did these. not trust you to write anything. No, that's smart. Because we've met you before. Yeah. Next up, I want to talk about what James Harden has been doing out in Brooklyn. The Nets are twenty-one and seven since forming their new big three. Twelve and one since KD left the lineup with a hamstring injury last month. As we look at Harden's impressive numbers this season, I want to point out that no player has ever won MVP the same year they were traded. So, Robert, can I have a word for Harden's MVP case this season? You know, I'm going with the word truthful. Ooh. What I mean by that, no disrespect to Paul Pierce, is that he's truly mm -hmm. a good player. You know, we <laughs> thought that he was just a guy that can dominate the ball in Houston, mm -hmm. but no, this guy is a team player. You saw where he was in OKC, he was a good team player, but he said that moment, like all great mm -hmm. players, I want to go out and see if I can shine them on. Now he realized realize he can't do that. So truthfully, he is a good player. He is a great player. He is an astonishing player. He's one of these guys that can change a team at any moment, so. Yes, but this is this is my thing. Uh -oh. like, this, this is my thing. You want to put this your word up? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. The word is difficult. Dude. <laughs> this is difficult. It's going to be difficult for him to win, to your point, to get mm -hmm. traded to a, 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 a loaded team. And I know the narrative would be, well, you know, uh, 
Kevin Durant missed time and, he, and Kyrie Irving's missed time and he's putting up historic numbers. Well, these are the same numbers that he's put up in Houston for the last five years. This is, he's done this. And when we make it seem that like, oh, he couldn't do it by himself, he had very good teammates. He was to multiple conference finals. Like, he was very, very close. Well, you know, CP3 got hurt, so that's the only time he's really been close. Close, but but that's what I'm yeah. saying, though. He's he's actually already proven that he is that top, top tier, even as a winner, because he's had multiple best records. He's done all of these things with D'Antoni. He just couldn't get over that final hump. But he didn't have pieces like this. No, nobody has so. pieces like this. <laughs> well, wait, yeah, he's but, not playing with pieces yeah, like this but in the this thing stretch. Is with him, though, 12 he's, and yes. 1 without Kevin Durant, which by the way, I love the people who take those stats and they're like, oh, see, no one needs Kevin Durant. They need Kevin Durant. <laughs> Kevin Durant. But yes, they do. That's but. still impressive in this chunk of the season. But yes. Kyrie's a top Kyrie's top just coming back tonight. He's been in and out, too. He's been in and out, but, but Kyrie just but had, let's, let's just also had like a 40 about, ball. He his, has been consistently good, he's alone, and he doesn't he's, get hurt. Yes, That's the one thing we never you. talk about. He plays every, every game, game, and he every doesn't get hurt. So we, that's kudos to him for that. No, I was just talking about that on the show yesterday because I think we're kind of missing that in mm -hmm. what he's bringing to Brooklyn this season. We obviously have been talking about the change in, he made in his playing style, right? Being more of a facilitator, helping everyone else shine. But think about this team. Kevin has been out for now, I think it's going to be around six weeks mm -hmm. at least. Mm -hmm. Kyrie, as I said, just been in and out throughout the entire season. Mm -hmm. If James wasn't there, this is all of a sudden the Clippers team from last year, yeah. right? It's like, oh, these guys have great talent, but no one's ever on the floor at the same time. And it's not really till the playoffs till they're playing together. Well, that's not true now of this Brooklyn team because James is there. And if, he is if, providing okay, that. Okay. If, how about this, Rach? I don't have a vote. You don't have a vote. If the NBA, if the, <laughs> if the MVP vote was today, <laughs> Rachel, yes. who would be your, who, would he get your vote? I think he's first team all NBA. That's an obvious thing in my mm -hmm. opinion. So yeah. that means he's one of the top five players in the league. Would he be your MVP? So, first of all, I never talk about who I'm voting for <laughs> until it happens. Because guess why, Richard? We do still have the rest of the season to play. You're not making me fall into ah, that just trap. Saying today. But I will say that, that part of the equation is going to be... It's funny, when Harden first went to Brooklyn, I thought part of the equation was going to be, oh, he's playing with Kevin and Kyrie on those three-headed elite, elite monsters. We usually don't... We, we can't separate out what you're doing as the MVP in such a way that you win. That's not really the case because he hasn't been playing with those guys consistently. Exactly. But I do think in a shortened season, it will hurt him that a number of his games came in Houston. Yes. Where he was putting up some numbers, but certainly didn't look like and, the way and he And the way he now. left Houston, too, is going to hurt him. That's going to be time. tough because yeah, you got all because, of the writers, yes. the media. Like, and it's like, it's just going to be very difficult. Difficult, right? <laughs> Very difficult. Right, but I not, wouldn't... Not that he's not deserving. I'm not saying that he couldn't. Yeah. Right. But we're but not it, saying he's not deserving. He's playing MVP candidate all through the season. Yeah. He's just got traded, and you no, got no, other guys... forced to trade. Oh, yeah, forced, forced to, to trade. trade. That's bad. different between yeah. saying traded yeah. and forced That's to trade. That's right. That's forced the key trade. statement there. And James Harden is an MVP. He's been top three for the last, what, four or five seasons. Yeah. So, like, we're not surprised that he's in the top three again this year, especially with the team that he has and what he's doing. But when you force a trade and it's not pretty, you're not going to get Especially it. when a team gave you everything you wanted and you're like, oh, this is not working for me. I'm out. So yeah, it hurts. Yeah. Him. But I want to make clear, you guys are talking about the tendencies of voters. And I think you're both completely accurate. Yes. Yeah, we're accurate. talking about voters. It's talking about not voters. a rule. I get, I get kind of, <laughs> fans are out there, whoa, I thought the rule was you couldn't have two other people on your team. I thought the rule was if you had a trade. Oh, There's no rule. It's just what we know with trends over time with those 100 people who vote. And Richard, I do want to just take a minute to say that while Katie Bummer designed these boards for us, I thought it was very sweet that you wrote hearts over your eyes. Let me see. And and really, that, that, that's when I was passing notes back in class before you could text, there was always hearts with the eyes. Mm -hmm. You're not surprised. Can't me. wait to see you next class, Richard, <laughs> with a heart. With a for heart. The eye. Finally, we head out to Phoenix. Finally, for everyone's benefit, um, Carl notes. Anthony Towns and number one Never. overall pick, Anthony. I can't even imagine you. I was passing school. notes in You're college. Poor <laughs> team. That was for Anthony Edwards right? and Pat combining to score 83 against the Suns last night. Cat had 41, 10, and eight. Edwards had. 41 points, eight boards. According to Elias, it was only the fourth time teammates aged 25 or younger each scored 40 or more. Cat and Wiggins did it in 2017. Richard, can I have a word for Cat and Edwards last night? Shout out Gus Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Bullets. Hope. Shout out bullets. Hope. Aww. <laughs> this is why there should be hope. Because Andrew Wiggins wasn't that guy. I think they established that. Very good player, deserving of the number one pick at the time. Very good talent. He's going to play for 15, 17 years, whatever. 
but they never ever had that guy, that dude. And to be if, next to Cat. To be next to Cat. And let's be honest, Cat needs to be your second best player. Not saying that Cat's not a multi time all star, not saying that Cat's not an all NBA quali like caliber player, but if he's your second best player, then you might be on to something. So the hope is because if Edwards can be your best player, or if he can get to the level where he's the best player on that team and now Cat's your second best player, you got a chance. Well, Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, Futuristic. oh, there we go. <laughs> because this team could be a great team in the future, but they need some pieces to go with them. If you look at this duo, it's like a miniature, notice keyword miniature, right. Shaq and, and Kobe. Oh, you're, uh, because, you're you know, tripping. It's just, come on, man. You're because, allowed to say that. I can say that. I said miniature now. I said miniature. Now. I said with miniature. Them. But when you play with guards that are good and are big, that can cause double team, it make they, you make each other better. So Edwards learns how to play this game and become a better ball handler, an outside shooter. And Cat can understand he's bigger than most guys taking time to the post. And when that's not working, step on the outside and shoot the threes. This team could be one of those futuristic teams that we always talk about that we want this day and age, a, a stretch four, a stretch, stretch five, five. Yeah. a stretch everything. Yeah, that's why I like Cat because he can go on the block. Mm -hmm. He can do a ton of things. But ultimately, certain times you see, the, you see what's going on. Yeah. Cat <laughs> cannot be your best player. If well, you want to win a championship, Anthony Davis can't be your best player. And that is not a knock on these high-quality players. I just think that if Anthony Edwards can get to the point where he's the best player on the team, right. and just because of his talent, and his ability, now you're really on to something. Well, you could you could have this guy if you add, let's say, like the Detroit Pistons did when they won. They okay. all were equal in talent. Yes. But they put it together. But that's hard. That's, that's hard. hard. that's hard. That's to hard to do. But you that's, never know what can happen. What, Miami, I think, did it. It had a chance at it last year if, uh, if Dragic could have You can have guys who are roughly equivalent and not one guy. I mean, Shaq and Kobe, who you played with, they certainly, each one of them would have told you that they were the best player on the Lakers. <laughs> that really was me. Well, <laughs> clearly, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I love Can I Have a Word. This segment will be back on The Jump. Coming up later on this show, the make dial-up rough second quarter for Derrick Jones Jr. First, he gets hit in the groin. Oh, Bledsoe. that was a punch. Not with did they, the Did Bledsoe, they kick him out for that? Oh, no, that was, that was, that was not, yeah. I think that was like a, yeah. Yeah, He's all right. Fight. Then a few yeah. minutes later, Oh. By and Ingram. Oh. They're trying to ground airplane mode, Richard. Oh, man. Never mind. Do you have any kids yet? No. <laughs> he might not have to do that. three kids? Somebody said three kids? <laughs> well, that's oh. it. That's it. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> oh. Why are we going to keep showing it? What are the rest I'm of you showing, guys doing? Stop showing. Stop When oh. that comes. When and that sound happens. effects, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, okay, we should just move on. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm not even going to say the next one out loud after the last one. I'm just going to. Thunderhawks, undrafted Brooke, Nathan Knight, pump fakes, an Ooh. accident on Moses Brown. Two hands for safety here, right? Okay. It's not often you see guys able to maneuver in the air. Move it around you, go around oh, you, and hands? dunk on you. Ooh. And just look at, stand down, look young up. fella. Look at that. <laughs> Remember you know, when you could do that, Rob? Uh, yes. That was 94. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. That's about. Robert, be able to, I would have gone with the left. Mm -hmm. Me and Robert would have gone with yes, the left yes, hand right there. Yes. Robert, when was the last time you played basketball? Because Richard said he has not done it since he retired. I played right before the pandemic hit. Oh, look at that. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Well, good for you, mm. bud. Look yes. at the guy go. Mm. Who, look who's a decade older and apparently they can still get it. And we'll... not, <laughs> no, that's not for me. Oh, there's my camera. It's, it's only because of my 50 year old. <laughs> Check out this sequence in Hornets Lakers. First, Wes Matthews with the strip. Woo. Oh, okay. All then, right. Then, okay. Biombo denies Trez here. Was that real speed? That, that, that. Oh, no. <laughs> Ron, get Matthews back on defense. Again. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Who says the NBA doesn't play defense? <laughs> no, oh. This is what y'all say you want. No. Yes. no, no. In my day, we did this. Old the... school guy that did this, though. Look at Ooh, look the swipe at... there and then get back on the other end, and yeah. take the charge, slash, steal it from him. Old school player, right there. Yeah. Matthews, there playing like go. a dad. Playing like a daddy. <laughs> Boom. Did you play against his dad? No, I ain't that old, man. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Adults, that could be the segment for this whole show. Uh, is Russ back? Another triple double last night, including this and one on Donovan Mitchell, where he, of course he does. Rock the baby. Did, did he rock him? Did he rock him? Yeah! yeah.
Oh, that's go. disrespectful. There and I love go. it. Hey. But I love it. I <laughs> love it. Picture perfect right there. That you guy know, who rocks the baby. You know how sick he, when he rocks the baby on you? It's, it's, a, it's a national thing that everybody's rocking the baby. Every time you see somebody, everybody, football field. That's beautiful. Rocking There's the baby. not enough of that. I want more signature celebrations back in our game. Who used to do like the, the too little? And who the... used to do the too little? Like he would just like, everybody's doing it now. Yeah, I know, started. but I'm just saying, I'm trying to think he started. He started the rock the baby. And that's, that's I, I dig it. It ain't quite the... <laughs> Where's the camera? It ain't quite the this. <laughs> the this. <laughs> that's you, only the bring, you only bring that out. Oh, on that's a good one. Serious now. occasions. Bye bye. Like bye -bye. that. Mm -hmm. God, Let's switch amazing. gears. Talk about the Clippers. They have not won back to back games since February 13th. And with a <laughs> record of 5 and 8 during that span, Robert, how concerning is this trend for a team considering we hold them to a high standard because we consider them championship contenders? We hold them at a high standard because they consider themselves championship material. They talked about it last year and it mm -hmm. didn't happen. Now they got rid of the coach and I was saying, oh, well now we have some issues with the offense. Now we're back on top. Apparently not because you cannot go out and lose a game every other game. When you want to be a champion, true champions might lose one mm -hmm. in a month, right. but you losing every other game and you got what you wanted with a new coach. You got a new offense, but now you out there not competing at a high level and not performing. We got a problem. Yeah, it's a problem because if you want to win a championship, you're going to most likely have to win two <laughs> games in a row at some point in time. That's the only thing. Yeah, they've, won two, they've won two games several, I'm row, several I'm, times I'm, this several season. Several times. Just I'm not talking recently. about in the last month. Yeah. As the season is winding down, yeah. you don't need to be playing your best basketball, no. but you should be trending in the right direction. I have some bad news for you, Richard. What's, what, what? You know how the season was shifted this year? We didn't start until September, so yeah. March is no longer the last month. You got some time. Did I say last month? <laughs> we, got, we got time. I but, said, no, I said but, in the last month. month. I said in the last not month. Not like the last month of Before the, the playoffs. Okay, all right, all right. Yes. No, yeah. I mean, look, and to, to the players' credit, they have said themselves. Yeah. You heard Kawhi Leonard the other day say he is, quote, very concerned or that he's a big concern. So I think they're, they're looking at it, but they are still looking for for what can unlock this team to its true potential. A lot of people think that's getting a point guard. Mark Stein from the New York Times reporting the Clippers are interested in a potential trade from Lonzo, for Lonzo Ball from the Pelicans. Richard, do you like the idea of bringing in Lonzo to upgrade their point guard position? I think that would be a great idea. I think Lonzo is a young player shot in the arm. He His passing ability and playmaking will get guys easy buckets. So when we look at Paul George, who struggled in the fourth quarter, or Kawhi, who struggled in the fourth quarter last season, if you're able to get an easy bucket here because your point guard knows how to push, he knows how to create, drop you a dime, that can get you going. So I think if you're looking for something, and I think Lonzo's an above average defender, so he fits what you need and the way you want to play. So if they're able to pull it off, things a good thing. That's what makes this world so great. We all have different opinions. I don't think he would work with those teams. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the way Kawhi plays, he's a dribble-dribble guy. Mm -hmm. You look at Paul George, he's a dribble-dribble guy. Why do you need a guy, point guard, who can pass well when these guys get their offense off dribbling the basketball? So he's not needed. And plus, okay, you get down the stretch, you follow him. He goes to the free throw line. This guy is scared to shoot free throws. So you need a guy who has a strong will, strong minded. Even though he's a good defensive player and he's a good passer, these guys don't need a good passer. They need a guy that can do something else other than pass. But, but this is my thing. Well, they need someone to kind of organize. Or, yeah, that's, hey, I agree with your point. Yes. But you reference Kawhi and you reference Paul George. Yeah. Lonzo can help those guys a little bit. But it's also the other guys on the team. Like, he's the one because Kawhi, his insist numbers are up over his well, than what he normally averages over his career. But he's not a great playmaker. Neither of those guys are dropping double-digit assists on consistent nights or yeah. on nights. So but, I just think that it will help. It's yeah. better than what they got. It's, it's better than what they, they got. have. But it's better than what they have. But still, though, will it be needed? Oh, well, you know. Well, I'm going to take this from the flip side. And I've been saying this since our reporters at ESPN were saying over the past couple of weeks that Lonzo was available or at least you could you could inquire about him. He was dating. Pelicans. He's dating. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's such a good fit, right, with Zion. If I'm oh. the Pelicans, I, I'm... I don't know. I'm well, not they don't want to pay him. That that's what they're saying. They're not going to pay him. That's the thing. What He's, the number they're asking. That's that's pay him. He can't shoot free throws. That's like. a pairing that I would keep together <laughs> if I was David Griffin, but I'm not David Griffin. Detroit? So there you go. Up next, we will discuss the incredible scoring surge this season and whether or not it affects the way we should be interpreting statistics in this era. This is really interesting. I'm excited to dig into this. A couple older school guys. Games. Watch commercial free with your TV, phone, or tablet. Stay tapped in with NBA League Pass Premium on AT&T TV. Weeks, NBA 
Wednesday doubleheader. ESPN and the app. The Celtics squaring off against the Bucks. 7.30 Eastern. Then the Nets taking on the Jazz, who have the association's best record. Our coverage starts with Stephen A's pregame, 7 o'clock Eastern. Welcome back to The Jump. I'm Rachel Nichols. I'm happy to be in studio with Robert Uri, Richard Jefferson. There's an offensive boom in the league, people. That is causing records to break all the time, it seems. Here's a little proof. On Wednesday, James Harden, Russell Westbrook, Nikola Jokic, Ben Simmons, Draymond Green, and DeMontis Sabonis all recorded triple-doubles. Those six players liking a triple-double on the same day broke the record of five, which was set just four days earlier. <laughs> that's not the only record that's toppled more than once recently. According to Mike Lynch of Basketball Reference, this season features eight of the nine best offenses in NBA history, according to offensive efficiency. The other that's offense, so by the way, last year's Dallas Mavericks. So again, all within the past two seasons. The surge in three-point shooting has definitely continued this trend. Looking at combined attempted threes per game, nearly 35 are taken in an average today. That's nearly double what it was 10 years ago, five times what it was 30 years ago. Seven threes in the to yes. further illustrate this point, Larry Bird, who entered the league right as the three-point shot was introduced in 79-80, that he's widely regarded as the best three-point shooter of his time. Well, guess what, guys? He averaged two, two three-point shots a game in his career. Steph Curry, who is, of course, regarded as the best three-point shooter ever, and certainly of his time, basically averages more than that in a quarter this season. So everyone gets the point now. I am sure, Robert, we're going to start with you. How much should we put... Like, how do you judge stats? The other night, right, Anthony Edwards, first rookie, right, to hit 40 since Kevin Durant and LeBron James. Do you put him in the Kevin Durant, LeBron James category because he did that or is scoring inflate? Like, it's hard. How do you judge these stats you hear? It's, it's so hard to judge this because back when Richard and I played, as you saw the stats, we didn't shoot that many threes. The game is a lot faster. There's so many things, elements to this game. If you really watch a game, I would love to see how many times a guy scores off a of travel. Mm -hmm. How many times a guy scores off a of carry. There's so many rules that are being broken that the NBA are allowing. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that kind of upsets me. Even yeah. when you shoot a three now, if you jump, mm -hmm. the guy yep. catapults in towards you and it's a foul and you go shoot the threes. I mean, the, the free throws. So those are things that the NBA and the stats and all these things don't come into play. But... I'm happy that these guys are doing this mm -hmm. because it makes the league look good. But I still <laughs> say that I don't like it because there's too many threes and guys just go to the free throw line way too much for me. I like that bump right there by Rick Mahorn. But this is, this is <laughs> I, I guess the, the, the best way to really like break this down is that all these teams that are doing what they're doing, it is impressive. But understand, there is no fans in there. There is no fans in there, and travel has changed. We yeah. saw elevated numbers in the bubble. bubble. And maybe this is kind of like, maybe that was kind of a little bit of a foreshadowing into what we are right now. Numbers are elevated. Travel is different. Players are not allowed to go and be social. They're not allowed to go out in certain cities. Are you saying that Miami flu is not real? No, the Miami flu is not real. Like, it, it's, there. you know, so, so that's the thing. We saw elevated numbers in the bubble because players were really just focused. Yeah. And so I'm not surprised here that with the rule change, Changes the three-point shots, no fans, and different travel schedules, and you're not allowed to go out and be social, that offenses are through the roof. Everybody wants to be like Steph now. Even when we were coming up, we want to be like MJ, and MJ was dunking on people, but yep. now everybody wants to jay up from three. Mm -hmm. So that's the trend, too. Now kids at home are watching this and say, oh, to make it to the league, I got to shoot threes. Mm -hmm. I'm scared where it's going to be in 10 years. If this, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, like, if Steph... I don't is, mean scared in a bad way. No, no, yeah, you could be scared in a good way. Like, yo, you see that? You see, you see, you see that? You, you got a seven-foot center shooting threes. That's yeah. scary. You got Joel Embiid doing step backs like he's Hakeem. Right? It's, that part is scary. What's really strange is, like, if kids are watching this right now and they see Steph and Dame shooting and making the ball from half court... Mm -hmm. What are they going to do? Like, when I watched MJ, I went and tried to work on the fadeaway. I didn't, couldn't do it the way he did it, but yes. I had it. No, the crazy thing is, after you watch an all-star game, no matter if you're in high school, college, Ooh, what you, you see, yeah, you go out and work do. on the next day. Now, I guarantee you, half the kids in America went out and started trying to shoot threes from half court because that's what we saw on the NBA TV. Okay, so I like <laughs>
like that <laughs> big men are more skilled. It makes the game yeah. more fun and for me as a fan. I like these guys shooting. I, I get excited when Damian Lillard pulls up from the logo. I'm like, woo, there he goes. You know, this that's fun. I have no problem with any of this. The problem I am having as someone whose job it is to sit here and analyze the game every day <laughs> is how do you yes. put how do you compare, right? How do you have those comparisons? And when you're talking about comparisons between players of this era, like when we judge MVP stats or something like that, on the one hand, they're all playing in the same game, right? So you should feel like, okay, well, these stats are comparable. But one of the arguments for Giannis for MVP last year, and I voted for him, so this argument mattered to me, was these numbers aren't just good or better than some of the other guys in the league. They're historic. He was doing, he was putting up numbers in categories, four or five categories that had never been done before. And I was like, well, that, that means something to me. But as we have seen the continuation of score inflation, as we go to judge that this year, as we sit here and say, man, not so many, you know, triple like doubles. like the steroid era in baseball? Anthony Edwards. Well, I don't know. <laughs> like, how do you put those into, into sort of, how do you, how do you put the whole picture into it? It's hard. And I think you can only do it after multiple years. So like next year, mm -hmm. we, can, we can talk about it this year and we can point out all the numbers. But then next year, okay, let's see if the scoring drops a little bit because players are, can go out and then there, there's you could be more social and then you have fans in there. Mm -hmm. So let's see if those numbers drop. And then in two or three years, I think to do it in the moment, we can just be enjoying and noise it. But knowing that the best, still the best defenses, even though they're not great defenses in historic standards, mm -hmm. are still going to be the teams that win championships. But, right. When that word analytics came into basketball, that's when it messed it up because everybody says three is more than two. Yeah. Now everybody wants to shoot three. So everybody looked at this Golden State Warriors team. So they're shooting threes and winning championships. This is a different type of beast. They have guys that are elite. You don't have elite guys that shoot threes. So you're not going to be in the same category. So everybody always try to take that model and duplicate it, but you can't sometimes. So this and is you, why you and get you got to be threes. smart. When you got a guy like DeAndre Ayton, this is one of my beasts. DeAndre Ayton is one of the most talented young big men, bear down, love the kid. But he's shooting like three free throws a night. Mm -hmm. You're a seven-foot dude built like David Robinson. Yes. <laughs> and I think that that is a crime. And he's a good roller, and maybe he's not as aggressive, and maybe he needs to work on some things. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you have a seven-footer that is the number one pick in the draft that is averaging, you know, 18 and whatever, shooting two free throws a game means that there's a lot of physicality that is lost. And he could dominate down there with the size and skill that he has. You know, we can't always just blame the players. We have to blame the coaches, too, because yeah, when right. you have a talent like that, use them. Just don't say, oh, this is the day and age where we should shoot threes go shoot a three big fella because you can be effective no use him make him put him in a position to be successful don't put him in a position to fail and that's what these guys are doing now when they're trying to force guys to shoot threes well yeah. look extremes in anything are a bad idea right <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so saying everybody has to do it this way that's not good right so, so obviously true. some nuance i do think some of the things the trends toward moving toward threes are the way coaches are using players i do think they're not all bad i think some of those are good i always defend the word analytics analytics just means math statistics yeah that's mean, not what sports are about right well <laughs> sports are well, not about well, smart no, things. but the question is how do you use them do you use them as the ruler of all decisions that extreme or do you use it as an extra piece of information in your toolkit when it is used as an extra piece of information i think those advanced stats are really really helpful but again it is where i'm having a problem one of the advanced stats that Giannis had historic numbers in last year never been done before was his player efficiency we didn't look at player efficiency 20, 25 years ago. It wasn't a stat that people had, that voters had, that the fans had at their disposal. For good reason. So we had the more, we had the more sort of general, the eye test, how, how much is he sort of counting for what he does for your team? And other things fall into that eye test besides the hard numbers. So that's kind of where some of that comes in. And you got to try to put it in context. It's it's interesting. We're watching it another era change before our eyes. You're all eye test. There we go. Well, you've seen plenty. You've seen seven championship teams from the I'm inside. All about the eye test. Your eye test means something to me.